commercial flight. It's one of the safest ways to get around. In fact, the current fatality risk is so low that if you wanted to be in a fatal accident, you'd need to take a flight every day for over 25,000 years to give yourself a fair shot, and by the time you were finished, you'd probably have died of something else already, like heart disease or boredom. But every team has its weak links, and in the case of commercial air safety, those weak links are the 128 airlines on the European Union's air safety list. And to clarify, yes, the list of unsafe airlines is called the air safety list. I do not know why. Maybe because no fly list was already taken? We dropped the EU a line to see what this was all about, but all we got was an information-free form response. So if any of you know anyone at the European Commission, please ask them about this and leave a comment. Semantics aside, getting on the air safety list is very, very bad. You immediately get banned from flying to, from, or over any EU member state, i.e. you have to cancel any flights you have planned, even if you've already sold tickets, and can't add service back until you get off the list. Surprisingly, most bans have more to do with an airline's home country than the airline itself. There are international standards for government oversight set by the International Civil Aviation Authority, or ICAO, a part of the UN that was having not one, but two week-long aviation safety meetings as we were writing this video, which would have cost almost $2,500 to attend as a civilian, because wow, turns out aviation safety is a gatekept hobby for the bourgeoisie elite. Do better. IKO has identified these eight critical elements, which encompass everything from having some kind of civil aviation authority, to a qualified staff of inspectors, to pilot licensing systems, to a way for the government to identify and address safety issues at individual airlines. You can actually take a whole online course about these standards, but for a civilian it costs $800, and I gambled away my last $800 trying to get enough money for that week-long aviation safety meeting in Canada. Do better. ICAO standards don't actually concern themselves with individual airlines' safety. Instead, these standards are about making sure that if an airline from a given country has a pack of rowdy toddlers flying a bunch of dinkmobiles to and fro, the country itself would find out and put a stop to it. Failure to meet these standards is enough to get all of a country's airlines banned from the United States and the European Union, and in fact, this flavor of ban accounts for 101 of the 108 carriers on the EU's naughty list. A further 22 are banned for being from Russia, because on the list of uncool things Russia did in the last few years, they refused to return 500 planes that had been leased to Russian companies, then registered them as their own, which invalidated the certificates of airworthiness that had been issued by, for some reason, Bermuda and Ireland. So now the EU feels there's not enough reliable certification of those plane safety, so Russian airlines are banned. For all you math whizzes out there, that still leaves five more banned airlines. These are the true bad boys of the bunch, the ones with records so uniquely concerning that every other airline in their country is clear to fly the European sky while they are specifically and exceptionally not. So let's meet them. First off, we've got Iran's Asimon Airlines and Venezuela's Avior Airlines. The EU Aviation Safety Agency isn't super forthcoming with what the problem was with either of these beyond vague safety concerns, but Avior caught a ban in 2017, shortly after emergency landing a flight in Ecuador on which passengers said they smelled smoke and saw fire. And if you're asking yourself, wait, how many flights was a Venezuelan airline operating to Europe in the first place? Well, I don't know, but it doesn't matter because the EU puts airlines on blast regardless of whether or not they actually fly to Europe, in line with the continent long history of not minding their own business. Up next, we've got Suriname's Blue Wing Airlines, who'd been put on the air safety list before, then got off in 2007, then got back on in 2010 after having three small planes crash in bad weather in a span of 25 months. If you go to their Wikipedia page, it's only got five sections. One is references, and of the other four, half are about accidents. Also, on the fun side, you can find out that they're based at the Zorg and Hulp Airport, which is a really cool name for an airport. Air Zimbabwe got banned in 2022, having grounded a bunch of planes for engine failures and malfunctions, and also having been in over 300 million US dollars worth of debt in April of that year. They used to fly a route from Zim to Gatwick, and they really want it back, so they've been paying their debts and getting new planes, which they're hoping is enough to convince the EU to reverse the ban. Time will tell. Our last baddie, Iraqi Airways, has been banned since 2015. Again, there's not a specific given reason, but they are getting 31 new planes in an attempt to get the ban lifted, so maybe an aging fleet was part of the problem. But their bad reputation comes from more than just a few retro aircraft. In 2020, a pilot got in trouble for letting a model into a cockpit when he was supposed to be flying the plane, and in 2018, a pilot and co-pilot were both suspended after getting into a physical fight with each other while, you guessed it, flying the plane. And what, pray tell, was the fight about? Thanks so much for asking. It was about the co-pilot's dinner. So if you're banned, what can you do? For starters, you can wet lease, meaning have another not-banned airline operate a flight that you sell tickets for. 
But shaking a bad boy reputation is hard, so if you want to actually get off the list, you've got some work to do. First, of course, you got to fix whatever issue got you banned in the first place. Then, for individual airlines, both they and their state have to send written explanations of how good they are now, then meet with both the EU Air Safety Commission and representatives from the member states, then have an on-site visit, and do a bunch of hearings. And if all that goes well, the commission might reconsider. So yes, the EU bans 128 airlines from their skies, and no, they're not all so disastrously unsafe that buying a ticket is a death sentence. But they are, for various reasons, riskier than they need to be, so the EU would rather their people not chance it. Most of us are pretty risk averse when it comes to shooting around the world in a steel tube, but when it comes to our safety online, we play pretty fast and loose, agreeing to terms and conditions without reading them, because what choice do we have? It's the devil's bargain of the internet. In exchange for doing our jobs, keeping up with friends, and watching half as interesting, we give up on privacy and hope for the best. But there's actually a better way, thanks to this video's sponsor, Incogni. Incogni deals with data brokers, the companies that collect and sell your personal information to third parties that could do anything from spam your phone with junk calls, take out a huge loan in your name, or, and this is really dystopian, run up your health insurance premiums based on your online activity. Your first line of defense is a law that requires data brokers to delete your data if you ask them to, but there are so many companies and finding and hounding all of them takes a lot of time and dedication. So your second line of defense is in Cockney, who for just a few bucks a month will chase down every data broker with your information, get it taken down, and follow up to make sure it doesn't go back up. Basically, Incogni lets you have your internet cake and eat it too, so if you're ready to scroll with some peace of mind for once, use code HALFASINTERESTING at the link below to get an exclusive 60% off an annual Incogni plan. 